This episode brought to you by these awesome patrons and members. It's not local talk, and it's not phone net. It's neither net. Warm up your Mac SE. It's time for Marchintosh. So what is Neethernet? Well, it's my take on a design called CapNet by Nate Hawthorne back from 1990. CapNet was designed as a very inexpensive alternative to local talk or even phone net adapters. Both of those adapters were really expensive back then and they're really expensive now too to try to find them on eBay and find them working and getting them in one piece. I decided to take this design and modify it to work with Ethernet connectors instead of phone connectors, because we all have Ethernet cables laying around now. And I figured, well, let's redesign it around that and make it even easier to use. I wanted a solution myself that wasn't expensive, old or whatever, you know, that kind of crapshoot you get by trying to buy stuff off of websites on the internet that I knew I was putting together myself, I knew was tested, I knew worked, and I could see it function. So, without further ado, let's dig in and I'm going to show you how to build these adapters and then after that, we'll show them working. Okay, splayed out here are all the bits and pieces we are going to need to make one of these Neethernet adapters. I'm going to run through them real quick. The first is you're going to need an 8-pin male modular um, DIN connector. Uh, you can get these at Mouse or DigiKey or any other place. I'm going to have links to the links in the description to all of this stuff, of course. Um, the next thing you're going to need is an eight conductor wire you, or a four or wow, can't speak a six conductor wire. This I believe is like thermostat wire or something like that. So it has uh, just six wires in it. That's perfect for this project. You could also use Ethernet cable or individual strands of wire or however you want to do it but the the important thing is we need six wires so plan accordingly um, we will need two 10 ohm resistors two 1k resistors two uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors a little piece of breadboard uh, perf board or whatever to connect things to you're going to need a couple of RJ45 Ethernet punch down jacks. Cat5, Cat6 is fine, whatever. Um, whatever is inexpensive. You could even use phone punch down jacks if you want to, but that negates the purpose of doing neither, neither Ethernet, but whatever. Um, and then you also need a little bit of uh, connection wire. Um, this is enameled wire, works great for this. You can also use uh, uh, any sort of. Um, uh, insulated wire because we need to do some uh, punch downy magic and some connections on the back. Um, in this case, I'm going to use just a spare of my spool uh, or uh, some of my uh, cross connect wire I use for telecom stuff. You can also just use extra pieces of Ethernet wire, 22 gauge hookup wire, whatever. Anything that's going to punch down onto these jacks well. The tools we're going to need, of course, are going to be a solder and soldering iron. We're going to need a punch down tool for the punch downs. You're going to need a pair of good cutters and a pair of wire strippers to strip your wire. So let's go ahead and get to it. Before we dig in though, I do want to show you the diagram I have made for this project. And that is right there. I'm going to leave that on screen for a second so you can grab it so you can see how we do this. My six conductor wire has these colors of wire. And this is uh, how I have uh, colored or situated this for this to work. So uh, those conductors are white, blue, brown, red, green, and black. And then if you look at the rear of the Mac also, which is also the rear of the actual um, DIN connector itself, like this, like that. That is the color, the connection the colors go to. One quick uh, trick about this to be careful with is that the black wire and the white wire are connected together on this pin. Um, uh, that pin right there, the black pin. Um, they're both ground. Now you could use five conductors and also uh, like do a cross connect on the back of the board to make it a little bit easier to solder in there if you want. But basically I just solder the white and the black together onto that single pin and it makes it easier on this side. So let's go ahead and get the wire stripped and soldered onto this connector. Thank you. 
All right, so that's all put together. So now we've stripped off this end and we need to strip off the little edges of the wires here. We're gonna do, I don't know, a half a centimeter or so. We're gonna pre-tin it. Then we're going to pre-tin these little side pads on this perf board, uh, primarily as good affixation points. Uh, so they're really well tied. And then we bring those wires across and tie them through the plated through holes or the via holes there. And we're gonna do those in the same color order that I have here on the piece of paper. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have to take the 10 ohm resistors as referenced right here and connect them between the two middle pads. So the red and green get connected together and the blue and brown get connected together. And we basically just fold those over like that and put them straight through between the two pins like that. On the back, you fold them directly across, solder them down and snip them off. All right, so now that that's done, we connect the 1K resistors. Those go directly between the outside pins. So these two pins connect together and these two pins connect together. But you gotta make sure you put it on the inside side of this other resistor, not the outside side. So let's go ahead and do that now. And now the two capacitors. These go directly in line with the two center rails right down the middle. You just put them the opposite direction of the resistors, fold one uh, pin or one leg towards these, pin, these pins and solder it down, fold the other leg the other direction, and just kind of tack it onto one of the via holes to give you a nice solder point for the next step. Now here comes the tricky part. You need to connect these ethernet jacks to the rest of the adapter that you've built. And the way I found to make this the easiest is first off, strip an old ethernet cable you have laying around that has a busted end or clip on it, or just buy one that cost a dollar, doesn't really matter, and strip the blue pair of wire out of it, all right? because we're going to be using the blue pair on the actual ethernet connector itself. And if you keep all the colors the same, it makes it easier to understand. Once you've stripped that off, cut this, uh, this, this piece into two different, two different halves, and you want to punch the blue and light and white blue on both of these ethernet uh, connectors, feed them through, uh, from the top through to the bottom, connect both of the blue wires to the left capacitor and both of the white wires to the right capacitor. Okay. 
and here's the final result. One extra step I uh, forgot to show you was using some spare hookup wire, just bare connection wire, uh, looped over top of the Ethernet ports and connected through some spare holes in the perf board in order to uh, lock those down in place so that they don't go anywhere. Apologies for the shaky cam, but I wanted to show you all of these connected and working so you know I have no tricks up my sleeve. So you see I've got three Macs here. I've got a Performa 410, a Power Mac 7300-200, and a good old Mac SE30 that has been upgraded to within inches of its life. Everything is all connected and working, and we're going to show you the connections. So back here, I've got the connector here, going to this, going to Ethernet connection. Flies off this way. There's the cable. There it is, going into the back of that Mac. Switch around here, and you can see I still have my connector here. Goes off this way, goes like that, loops around, connects there, and connects to the back of that Mac right there. So all three are connected. So, this Mac right here is sharing its files. This Mac right here is sharing its files. And this Mac right here is running an old version of the OS that doesn't have the extension installed, so it's not sharing files. But because Apple Share is install, it comes with the Mac OS, it's there and ready to connect. So if I go to this Mac right here and I go to the chooser and I click Apple Share, you can see the Power Mac directly to its left. Click that, we connect, we connect, go, 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 it does things. And hey, look, it's the Power Mac. Now, if I go to the Power Mac and do the exact same thing, we go here and we go to Chooser and we go to Apple Share. Hey, look, it sees the Mac SE and we click on that and connect to it. Oops, I clicked Cancel. There's the Mac SE's drive. And then finally, do three of them work daisy chain together? And here I'm going to prove that they do. This one, I click Apple Share. Look at that. They are both there. Now I can connect to the Mac SE just fine. Works perfectly. However, if I try to connect to the Power Mac, I get a divide by zero. And I believe that is because the Power Mac's drive is just too large for this Mac OS to see. It crashes the machine, but it does work. It does function. So, proof positive that these adapters work, and they work great. So let's talk about the costs. I'm using two sources for this list. One is Amazon, and the other is Mauser Electronics. But you can use whatever source you want. I'm also making some assumptions that you have the tools you need, but don't have any of the materials you need. So these things are a little bit variable. The first thing is the perf board here. Getting a kit from Amazon of 32 pieces at $12.99 a piece, and then factoring the fact we only really need to use half of one of those perf boards per adapter, we're getting 21 cents per piece of perf board. Next are the RJ45 jacks. These are approximately a dollar a piece from Amazon, and we need two of them, so that's two bucks. If you hunt around, or if you're like me and you get them in bulk because you do lots of networking jobs, that price goes way down. The 10 ohm resistors are 10 cents a piece for a mouse over at 20 cents. 100 ohm resistors, 10 cents a piece, 20 cents. The one micro or the uh, 0.1 microfarad, or basically the 100 nano capacitors. 2, 11, 22 cents. The DIN 8 plug is one of the most expensive pieces. Um, that's from Mouser. That's $2.33. Any other place I've looked for it um, that isn't an electronic supply warehouse like Mouser or DigiKey, this price tends to be about three times as much. Your mileage may vary. And then the final thing is insulated wire. You can get single, uh, single feet, just not spools, like a single cut off foot of eight conductor insulated wire, which will per serve your purposes for making one of these. Actually, you could make two out of it um, for a buck ninety three from Mauser. You can also just yep, if you happen to have a spare Ethernet cable around that's busted or screwed up, you can cut that and use that as your uh, wire conductors or anything like that. Again, so you may be able to get your price even lower there. Now, I haven't factored in shipping here, but you know, if you're going to purchase a new one of these by new, I mean original. 
If you're going to purchase an original phone net adapter or something like that from one of the uh, usual suspects, you're going to be shipping there anyway, so it's kind of a wash. And if you hunt around for these sources, you may be able to consolidate uh, where you get all of these products from all into a single shipper and again, reduce your shipping costs. So, you know, there is some variability there. But all told, parts themselves, $7.09. I went hunting around for uh, original phone net and uh, local talk adapters uh, during the process of this video. The cheapest one I could find on the usual, usual suspects was $45, and that was before shipping. So significant savings here. And if you need to make a lot of these, your prices here per item are going to go down even further because you'll be able to buy your items in bulk and get your per item cost even lower. So as you can see, with a little bit of time and patience, you can make up some of these adapters far cheaper than you can buy original ones off eBay, hook up all your Macs, and get them talking to each other again. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can also support me in the museum through Patreon or by snagging some merch at jcm-1.com. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, one old Mac is all you need.